There's a lot of ways to go about studying for science, whether that be physics or chemistry. And a lot of the time, students use the wrong study methods for science, which results in them not doing as well despite putting in all that effort and can cause them to feel demotivated and lose confidence in their science knowledge and abilities. Luckily today, I'm with my friend Michael, the CEO of Hero Education, and he's tutored hundreds of students in physics and chemistry. And he'll be sharing his tips on how to study for science today. So Michael, do you want to introduce yourself a bit? A little bit about me, uh, I graduated in the same year as Shane. I did uh, physics, chemistry, four unit maths, English, you know, did the typical subjects uh, that, uh, that we do at, at Bochum Hills High School. I got a 99.7 ATAR um, and I was ranked first in physics and fourth in chemistry at school. So I, I definitely love the sciences. Um, and actually ever since I graduated from high school, pretty much the day I, I graduated, um, I've been mentoring students in the HSC um, and supporting them in, in each of these respective subjects. So when it comes to studying for physics and chemistry, what kind of mindset and attitude is essential? Uh, the mindset and attitude you need to have is that you want to learn a subject for depth of understanding. If you're going to learn physics or chemistry and just want to know kind of what is the answer straight away, uh, what do I need to write exactly in an exam, yeah. um, a lot of the times you become very robotic um, and surface level in the way that you understand the concepts. Um, and that actually puts you at a significant disadvantage because in the HSC, especially with the new syllabus, there is a lot of application-based questions. Um, and in these application-based questions, it's all about, here's a theory that you should know, so therefore I want to see if you can apply it to a completely new situation um, and see whether you can still give me a very detailed and constructive response. Um, and so the attitude and mindset is you've got to want to learn very deep and, and uh, so I know when I'm for example tutoring a class mm -hmm. that the students are going to do well when at every intersection of content that I teach they're bombarding me with questions mm -hmm. like hey Michael like why is it that this force exists or why does this particle behave in a certain way when you ask those questions and you become curious about how it really works then your level of understanding is so much more beyond than what a single dot point might appear to ask from you and that's when you can do really really well mm -hmm. So when it comes to physics and chemistry exams, what are like the main exams that you will be faced with and assessments out there? Okay, so uh, firstly for the sciences, I'll break it into two main parts. Uh, the first type of exam would be the theory-based exams, and that's you know, normally made up of a series of multiple choice questions and then short and long responses. So by short responses, I mean one to three to four markers, and then some of the longer ones, and I'm talking about like the five all the way to nine markers that are seen in the HSC. Um, so those are the theory-based exams. Um, and then there are more practical um, type of exams where, and, and you know, sometimes they call it a depth study now, um, where students are required to do a lot of research and experiments outside um, of the exam kind of context. And then they go into the exam um, and they get asked about um, the experiments that they ran. Um, they're given a lot of data, so there's a lot of skills and data processing involved. So that's a more kind of skill-based practical examination, and then there's the theory type, so two types of exams, I'll say. So how would you like prepare differently for firstly, let's say the theory type mm. exam and then for like the more practical skills based? Yeah, uh, it, it's, always, it's always tricky. I think the, the practical skills based type of exam, um, it's really about when you do the experiments at school. I know a lot of students have an inclination to you know, have a lot of fun and, and muck around a little bit, um, but there is merit in taking the time to actually understand what are all the elements that are happening uh, when you run this practical investigation. Um, is it valid? Is it reliable? Is it accurate? Uh, what about the method um, can be improved? Um, and yeah, really paying attention to those minor details and especially when it comes to reading tables, reading graphs, um, drawing your own graphs, constructing your own tables, um, taking those elements of the practical investigations very seriously yeah. um, because that's exactly what's going to happen when you sit in an exam. Particularly, I would say, uh, walk into exam knowing for the practical side that they're going to give you something you've never seen before. Mm -hmm. um, they could give you a, a molecule that you've never seen before in, yeah. in chemistry or in physics. They could give you a concept that you haven't even really studied. Mm -hmm. um, and what it's about is using fundamental knowledge that you know are facts and truths mm -hmm. and kind of building your way from there to problem solve in an exam. You can expect that to happen for sure. On the theory based, uh, it's, it's a lot of, and I'll go into this later, but it's definitely a lot of uh, understanding content at a very deep level and then applying that through a wealth of past paper questions um, and really learning from your mistakes there. 
Yeah. So when it comes to studying for physics and chemistry and other science subjects, what's like the right amount of time that you think a mm. student should be putting in? And like, how do you actually figure out if you're putting in enough time, spending way too much time? Like, how do you find that balance? Yeah, yeah, good question. I think it comes down to the, the NESA syllabus stop points that they give you, um, especially for kind of the sciences, Generally speaking, they're only really allowed to ask you within the bounds of the dot points and the content that is covered there. Um, so when you're writing your notes, or even when you're sitting in a tutoring class, or you're at school listening to the teacher, you should always double check what content am I learning and which dot point does it actually point towards. Um, because another problem is if you learn too much and there's too much information and you don't have an idea of where all of this information sits inside the syllabus, you get really overwhelmed. Whereas when you start putting pieces together, you understand I'm learning this because it's a continuation of the theory before, and this is kind of the next stop point that I'm learning, then you know that it's constructive learning. Um, and that kind of goes beyond that and say, well, uh, how, how, like, how do I know when to stop? Yeah. How do I know I've had a deep enough of an understanding? And generally that comes back to two things. First, if you read the dot point carefully, does it talk about that idea? If not, then probably it's a little bit of an extension and you want to use it to understand what's going on, but you don't need to know it to the T and expect to write it out in response. It's a second indicator per se is definitely going to be your exam past papers. Um, look at your past paper questions. What dot point is that question asking about? Maybe it's three dot points integrated into one, but you should always be able to point a question back to a single or few dot points. Um, and that's when you know, okay, this is kind of how they generally test it. So this is kind of what I need to know about these dot points. Um, so that's how you prevent yourself from kind of going beyond and wasting too much time on the subject. Yeah. So what happens like you've studied hard for an exam, you're in the exam then, yeah. and then there's a question that you just have, don't know what to do, like you don't remember the answer to, like how right. do you approach that and try to get a few marks from it. Yeah, it happens, right? We, in fact, most of the time in a five minutes reading time, you're kind of going through, you read this question, you're like, Oh God, <laughs> I've got no idea how to answer this. And you, well, first of all, leave it till the end. Uh, don't waste too much time in the middle of the exam trying to figure it out. Um, I would always want the peace of mind getting as many marks in a paper first and then coming to tackle these larger problems and, you know, trying to be a bit more calm. Yeah. Once I know I've got, you know, 70 marks behind my back or 80 marks behind my back. Yeah. Um, so that's the number one thing. Don't panic, just leave it till the end. Mm -hmm. Then what do you do? It's the same way that um, we approach kind of understanding in science and also what I said, earlier about long response questions. Yeah. Just look at the question really carefully. What are they asking about and create buckets. And then after you've done that, I want you to use what we call a learning from first principles or thinking from first principles method. Um, in science, all of the complexity and the layers of content that we learn comes down to the most basic things. Mm -hmm. Again, we just use chemistry as an example. Um, if we were to think about all the intermolecular bonds, well, all of it comes down to electrostatic attraction between positive charges and negative charges. So when you're going into a response and you're not too sure what to write, think what is obvious that I know and then how do I work my way up? That is probably the best way you can to actually problem solve. And if you think hard enough, sometimes you realize you know the answer. You just panicked when you first read it because it was a little bit different in the wording. So create buckets and use thinking from first principles. That's going to help you. Yeah, just to you know, help you guys a little bit more, um, I've actually prepared a science guide. It's, it's really just to help you guys navigate through practical investigations and depth studies that I'm pretty sure will be very useful. Um, so yeah, comment your email down below um, and we'll be able to send um, that guide to you. And make sure to like and subscribe this channel for more free content um, to support you guys. And if you found any of what Michael said today useful and helpful to your own studies, make sure to check out Hero Education down in the description below. And if you have any other questions regarding physics, chemistry, or just study tips in general, you can always reach out to Michael, who's happy to help. His email is linked in the description box as well. As always, take care, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.